Today, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of getting started with weights and biases. So our tool is focused around machine learning. If you're doing a machine learning project and you want to track all of your results in one place, visualize things, and share your results with collaborators, this is a great tool for you. Um, here's a featured gallery of some reports that people have made inside our app. So this allows folks to log metrics directly to weights and biases and then visualize and describe their results in the UI. So here's an example. One of our customers at Latent Space is creating GANs, and they're able to visualize metrics over time, compare against baselines, and then visualize the results of their models. Um, this is crucial in terms of collaborating around a machine learning project because they're able to have a centralized dashboard where they can show and explain their results. So let's get started by signing up for an account. So now on the home page, you'll be able to go through this quick checklist to get started with weights and biases. First, you'll want to try out the logging and see how it works. So I've created this live example for you that you can follow along with really quickly. So what you'll want to do is copy these commands into your terminal. That's cloning the tutorial project, which is a quick Keras model, and then authenticating. So that's you putting your API key into um, your local machine. Now I'm running python tutorial.py, and that will start this model training. So as you can see, this um, link is printed out on the command line. So opening up that link, you get the project page. This page has a couple of key features I'd like to share with you. Here's the sidebar where you can see each row is a single run. So it's a single experiment that you ran in your script. Each time you call wmb init, a new run and a new line in this table get added. Now you can filter these. So if you have, um, say, a certain number of epochs on a set of runs that you want to compare, you can filter by that. You can group by any column you're logging in here, and you can also sort by different values. Right now, it's the latest run at the top. Um, so each of these columns is just something that I'm logging from my script, and that makes it easy to compare things like dropout or um, hidden layer sizes across my models. To configure the columns, I can click over here and add and remove columns. Um, since I'm the only user, I'm going to hide that column. Um, now, another cool feature that I'd love for you to try is you can add notes. So if you have um, a little note to yourself that you'd like to remember about that run, you can add that here. And when you click on the run, that note will be available here in the overview tab of the run, along with the config and summary and things like the git repo and the latest git commit before you ran the run. So these are background pieces of information that might be useful for you um, as you're comparing runs. Another thing that we pick up if you're using, um, if you're logging the media, we offer a feature where you can visualize different images from your runs um, in the UI. You can also do this with point clouds and audio and a lot of different rich media types. We even support molecules, which is pretty cool. So to learn about those particular features, you can do, go to docs.wmb.com, and that's all listed here in our Python library. So wmb init is what launches a new run. wmb config is where I save hyperparameters, maybe the dataset name or model type, um, and I feed that into init. And then log is what I call over time. So inside my training loop, I just pass in a dictionary of what I um, want to see on those graphs. And if I have a custom um, x-axis, I can also set that here and then select a custom x-axis here in the UI. Great, so that's the run page. A couple of tabs that are cool. Um, we get the system metrics. So this run didn't run for very long. The CPU utilization was pretty low, but these get logged about every 30 seconds and, um, and they're useful for identifying bottlenecks in your model. Um, we also pick up the graph, so if, um, if you want to look at the shape of your model, you can check that on the model tab. Uh, we get the standard out and standard error, and show that here in the logs tab. And then we also save any files that you put in the WMB directory. 
So in this case, I saved the best model at the end of training. Um, and that happens automatically with the KS callback. You can also see any images that I uploaded. Um, in this case, I'm looking at uh, Fashion MNIST, which is black and white images of different pieces of clothing. So now back to the project page. Um, you can see here, by default, this project is private. But I'm going to make it public so that you guys can come and check out this URL if you like. Um, so looking at the tabs available here, you can leave a description on your project if you'd like other folks to be able to um, understand what you're trying to do here. So in this case, I'll do um, WMB slash tutorial. And I'll just grab this link and paste that in so that other folks who come to my project can see the repo that I was using. Now, it looks like I could probably improve some of these values. So I'm going to go back to the terminal, and I'm going to edit the script and rerun. So as this is running, it prints out again that link, and you'll see that run appear live here in the dashboard. Now looking at the dashboard, I can actually configure these graphs. So epic isn't that useful to me. I'll delete that panel. Now I can resize these to take up more space. As you can see, the new run is being drawn live. So it looks like those changes weren't very effective. Even though it trained for longer, it never uh, achieved the same level of accuracy. Um, that's a bummer. But it's useful to be able to see that live because I can actually stop the run early if it's running for a very long time and try a different combination of hyperparameters. So again, you can compare those here in the table. Um, you can also use the magic wand to only show columns that are different. So in this case, I only changed epic, learning rate, and momentum. So it hides all the other columns that aren't necessary. Great. Now I'm going to show you a nifty feature for describing your results. Um, so I'm going to create a new report. And this report feature is a way that you can create and save dashboards and then share those dashboards with your collaborators or keep track of different stages of the process as you're building out your project. So each section has a set of different panels and then a run set that controls the data visible in this section. So here I've just added a markdown panel and I can describe what I'm working on. I can rename the section. And then I can also add a bunch of different types of plots. So I could put accuracy and validation accuracy on the same graph to compare them across runs. As you can see, the first run in blue, the second run in red. In this project, I have a lot more runs. And that means that I can compare across many, many different combinations of hyperparameters. So as you can see, there are actually there are a lot of variations across my 180 runs in here. Um, and that's because I ran a hyperparameter sweep. And now we can talk about that more together in a follow-up video. I'll put a link in the description here. So back to the workspace. I can export these graphs to a report and show you what a report looks like with some more data in it. So here that saves the state of the graphs that I had in this section, as well as the visible run sets. So say I just wanted to talk about one of the sweeps that I'm doing. I can select the sweep and then pick which one I want to show here. And that filters down these graphs in the section to just the sweeps selected in this table. Now, if I want to filter even more, I could do something like choose a particular batch size threshold and say it has to be greater than maybe 150. And that filters down my table even more. Um, 
So any changes you make in the table on a given section will be reflected above. Another thing you can do is you can group the different sections and then visualize those groups. So imagine I have two different sweeps and I want to see which one performed better. I can set up two different run sets here, one for the first sweep and one for the second sweep. So here I'm filtering down to the second sweep and I'm visualizing all of those runs and then I'm going to group by all. That means that I'm putting them all in one big group. So now if I group by all here, I'll be able to see those grouped runs up here on the graphs. So once that's saved, I'll be able to share this link. The way I do that is here. I can copy the link, and if I want to give other folks who are members of my team or who I give access to the project, I can turn this on so that they can actually come in and edit the same report. So we do support collaborative reports. Um, if you like a report that you see and you want to copy the layout and try your own runs in it, um, you can clone a collaborator's report in the same project and then edit it in a new copy. Great. So now I'm going to show you a few of my personal favorite features. I'm going to create a new section below and then show you what some of these other visualizations look like. So we've looked at the line plot. That allows you to pick multiple Y metrics and show them on the same graph. You can group, change the chart style. You can also change the titles and the legend. So say I want to see the batch size in the legend. I can show that here. Um, and I can even say batch size in the legend itself so that it's visible up here. So now I have quite a few runs visualized, which is a bit messy. I'm going to click this I button and select Visualize None, and then just pick one run that logged these metrics. And I'll be able to see those three different metrics on here on the graph. Now if I want to, I can actually make those lines different colors by editing the line styles down here. So I can pick um, three colors to differentiate them more. I can also change the line style if I want them to all be solid. Um, so this is totally up to you, very configurable. And then expressions. So I can actually set up an expression to, um, to use all three of these metrics at once. For other types of plots, we've got bar charts. And this will take the final value that was logged for a given metric. Uh, you can change this in your script if you want to set the summary to a different value, like best accuracy instead of final accuracy. Now, um, you can also add a scatter plot. And there you go. You can mouse over these guys. You can select a region. And that will actually zoom in on the other charts on just the runs that you've selected. Uh, another chart that behaves that way that I think you'll like is called the parallel coordinates chart. Now the idea here is I can see the relationships between my hyperparameter choices and my output metrics. So let's look at something like accuracy. So I have a couple of runs that crashed and never logged accuracy. To get rid of those, I'm going to select on this axis and then press the filter button. And that will actually add a filter to the run set. So now if I go out here, I'll see that a new filter has been added to restrict the accuracy to just the values I care about. Now if I zoom in on the axis here, you'll see that's actually zooming in on the other graphs as well. So you can slice and dice your results um, dynamically and compare them. Now the next type of panel I want to show you is called the run compare. And this is a table that takes the config and summary metrics from your run and shows you the difference across runs. So now you can imagine if I'm keeping a few of my hyperparameters the same and then just varying a couple of things, 
I probably don't care about all of the hyperparameters that are the same on every run. So you can use the diff only feature to hide any rows that are the same across all runs. And this guy, again, is controlled by the run set down here. So if I wanted to just compare a couple of different runs, I could do that by selecting them here in the table and then seeing them appear here on this. Now, you can imagine wanting to show a zoom in on just a couple of runs, but keep showing all of the rest of the runs up here. So the way I'd recommend doing that is just creating a new section. That gives you access to a new run set and a new area to fill in visualizations. So here I'll create that run compare to zoom in on just a couple of runs. Starting from visualize none and selecting just a couple. Great. Next up is the code comparer. So this will take code from across your runs and show you the diff in the UI. Now, by default, we have this turned off. So in your settings page, you'll be able to go to your project defaults. As you can see, my projects are private by default, and now I've enabled code saving. So that means any new runs that I run, I'll be able to save and compare the code um, in this UI. You can learn more about that here in our docs if you look for code comparer. And so here's an example of what that looks like. So here's um, a diff in the UI. And you can also, if you're using Jupyter, get the session history. So that allows you to see exactly the cells that were run during your run. Next up, we've got the parameter importance panel. I love this panel. I think it's really cool. So the way this one works is it takes all of the runs that you have visualized, and it runs a quick random forest. Um, based on the metric that you've selected here. So I want to see what different config values most affect the accuracy. It looks like learning rate is really important. So if you're interested in logging something like a segmentation mask, you can actually dynamically visualize different pieces of the mask at different opacities in the UI. You can also log audio, video, we have histograms, we have this cool molecule feature. And I'm starting to add some live example links. So if you go to the docs, you can actually open up a page where you can see this feature live in the UI. Um, so here's an example of a cool molecule that I can actually open up and zoom around to look at. Um, so this is the kind of thing that you can log and visualize. We're constantly adding new features. We've got ROC and PR curves, confusion matrices, and heat maps. Um, you can also, if you'd like to log something from matplotlib, we'll host it and show it in the UI as Plotly. Um, so that gives you a chance to log really custom graphs and then have them be interactive. Now, if you have any other features that you'd like to see in here, um, I'd love to hear about it. We're constantly making this better, adding different framework integrations, um, and we're also really interested in, um, in hearing what kinds of projects you're working on. If you click on your profile image, you'll see the gallery page. And this gallery is a curated list of the cool reports that um, we talked about at the beginning of this video. So you can email us, contact at wmb.com, and um, share your work to be featured here. Great. Well, this has been fun, you guys. Um, I hope that as you start running more runs, you uh, reach out to us with any questions or suggestions, and um, I hope this video was useful to help you get started. Thanks, you guys.